something that you were not uh, looking for. Right. And that serendipitous discovery was always sometimes more interesting than, than finding the initial, what you really exactly. looked for. But the card catalog has gone away from the standpoint of using those cards, which are very labor-intensive to, to work with. Uh, but card catalogs, the physical structures, are some places around because people have found thousands of uses for mm. those sets of drawers. But right. we have evolved from that standpoint, from the card catalog. Now, you mentioned Dewey, which is one of the problems that our students have. Okay. When they're in public school, through the high school level, Dewey is the way that we organize many of the resources. Right. It's a taxonomy. It's a classification scheme that tries to group materials about the same subject in the same area. Academic libraries found that too limiting mm. because Dewey mm-hmm. starts with 10 major areas and then subdivides further. Well, uh, the Library of Congress back in, I'm trying to think, 19, I'm, I forget the date, but it was the early 1960s, right. came up with a new system called the Library of Congress system. Uh, and it uses letters rather than numbers as the way of doing basic division. So there are 21 categories, Mm -hmm. major categories in the Library of Congress system, subdivided by additional letters, which bring even more, Mm -hmm. and then starts using numbers. Well, what I like to teach students about it is if you can find through the catalog some call numbers that look like they're in a similar area, it's a good place to go find that area and start browsing. Because as you probably remember, typically the book you were looking for on the shelf was not there. Yep. And if you do know about the fact that we organize materials about the same subject together, you can browse the Mm -hmm. shelves and find stuff that's useful. Excellent. Exactly. I know that's how I usually found things. I found even more resources than what I was originally intending. Mm -hmm. So. You are listening to Nassau Community College Forum. I'm Kevin Boston Hill, and my guest today is Dr. Arthur Friedman, chairperson or professor, rather, of library reference services here at Nassau Community College. We'll be right back after this important message on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone who... Had to be independent and take initiative. And that's how I handle every project I get. Discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. We now return to Nassau Community College Forum. Welcome back to Nassau Community College Forum on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Kevin Boston Hill, and our guest today is Dr. Arthur Friedman, faculty member of the Library Reference Services here at Nassau Community College. So we we left off talking about um, how the library organizes all those reference materials, and we talked a little bit about um, how we can source all of the materials as well. Now, let's take a step back or kind of combine these together and talk about um, Turnitin for a moment. And what is, how is that used in our academic settings today? Okay. Uh, a few years ago, actually, I think we're now using it since about, nine, um, about 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nassau Community College started using Turnitin. It's a service that allows students to upload papers that they write to be analyzed for originality. 
Princeton. Okay. It also does some work, I believe, in terms of uh, some of the grammar skills as well, but mm-hmm. principally it's uh, originality. So it's comparing what students are writing to its database of hundreds of thousands, probably millions of materials at this point, to see whether it's just cut and paste that the mm-hmm. students have done or if they have um, paraphrased the material, put it into their own language. And teachers request the students to upload this material, and that's one of the ways that they can analyze whether students are doing their own work or not. Okay, because I know we need to cut down on plagiarism and make sure that, as you, we mentioned earlier, you're building on mm-hmm. previous works and standing on the shoulders of giants and going forward. So I think, so have you found or have you heard of there being any um, complaints or issues with using that service, whether it's from students or from faculty? I haven't heard any complaints except for the idea that it costs money. Mm. Uh, It costs the college money to have the service available. And so some people say, do we really need this? Well, if it's improving the quality of student papers because they're doing their own work, Mm -hmm. then it is money well spent. Uh, Faculty can recognize plagiarism fairly rapidly. I had my my own teaching experience where um, there was a, two students turned in the papers that were so similar that you knew that they copied from one another in terms <laughs> of their work. Uh, I returned it to them and said that I think they should redo their work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're looking for students to do the best work they can, to have a good learning experience. And by hearing other people's ideas and moving it along is how you actually learn. Okay. So now, if there is a a book or a periodical, other periodical that I need and I can't locate it uh, in here at Nassau Community College, are there, I guess, partnerships or other networks that the library has that, that can help me out? Okay. The term is called interlibrary loan. Got it. And libraries have been collaborating and cooperating with one another for many, many, many years. So if we don't have an item, we can put out a request and say, who else has this item? Mm -hmm. Can you supply it? Now, much of that we can determine who has the item because there are national catalogs that tell us who has the item, and people will supply that. For example, just to give you a little piece of it, uh, while we talk about materials being accessed through the electronic databases, not everyone subscribes to all the same publications that are Mm -hmm. in those databases. And so some library may have the journal you're looking for, while Nassau Community College doesn't. Right. And using the interlibrary loan service allows us to do that. Now, we have another piece that we are party to here in Nassau County, actually on Long Island, that was developed by the Long Island Library Resources Council. That is a reference and and research Mm-hmm. Hold, that for, hold that for one quick second. Just want to need to ID the station. Okay. You're listening to Nassau Community College Forum on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Once again, my name is Kevin Boston Hill, and our guest today is Dr. Arthur Friedman, faculty member of the Library Reference Services here at Nassau Community College. And you are continuing on about okay. how we can get materials. The mm-hmm. Long Island Library Resources Council set up this program many years ago, which we call the Research Loan Program. Got it. And while most colleges will not allow students or other people to come use their resources without being a student of their own institution, Mm -hmm. faculty member at that institution, the research loan program allows us to give the student or faculty member um, a card that will send them to that other institution and tell them they're looking for materials in this subject area please allow them to use the resources. Back in the old days, it used to take a letter from the (laughs) library director Mm -hmm. to the other library director to get that permission. But this set it up so it makes it much easier uh, and exists between the academic libraries, but also includes the public libraries. Oh, okay. So if if you're a... Nassau resident, and I uh, live in East Meadow, and the East Meadow Library doesn't have what you're looking for, but Hofstra does, or Nassau has it, you can give the person a research loan program card, send them there, and they can borrow materials directly. Oh, that's excellent. That actually was going to be my next question, is are the university libraries open to um, 
anybody from the community? How can they get access to it? Well, they try to restrict. Yeah, I'm sure. And they especially try to restrict it during exam periods. Of course. Okay. <laughs> um, starting from about November to Christmas, mm-hmm. or from uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas, they don't like to see too many other people coming in because they want the space available for their students. Exactly. I can totally understand that. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about um, any – is there any – Outreach that the that library services does to kind of talk about um, the, what they offer or it, any other ways that they support the general uh, community, National Community College community, or the community at large. Well, I promote a program that we used to call SDI. Okay, the Selective Dissemination of Information, and. Uh, Frequently when I'm reading articles or uh, reading review services, Mm -hmm. I'll find material that I know my my colleagues and the rest of the faculty might be interested in, and I make sure that I make them aware of that type of material. Okay. Uh, I try to encourage other faculty to do the same thing because that sharing of resources, we all can't know it all. Right. Uh, We don't know. There are thousands and thousands of materials produced every day in this country mm-hmm. in the in periodical articles but even just in terms of monographs i believe there's something like 75,000 volumes published every year and trying to keep up with what's going on out there is more than one person can do oh i'm sure that that's yeah that's more than a full-time job for for any one person yeah absolutely right yeah and as i mentioned along on library resources council many of us network with our, our colleagues because we're members of committees that exist on Long Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're members of our statewide associations, national association, uh, to disseminate information. Excellent. So if you had one thing to, to leave our audience with, one final thought about library services, what would that be? When you come into the library and go to the reference desk, uh, don't bother starting with, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, (laughs) This is what we're there for. This is why we're in the profession, because we want to work with you to help you find what it is that you need to make your life better, to find the materials that answer your questions and move along further. So don't look at that desk as an imposition. Look at it as just a spot that we're working with you across it so we have the information there that can work with you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. So we'd like to, to thank our guest today, Dr. Arthur Friedman, who is a faculty member here at the Library Reference Services at Nassau Community College. So, again, thank you for coming to the show today. My pleasure. My pleasure as well. Again, my name is Kevin Boston Hill, and thank you all for tuning in and listening to Nassau Community College Forum right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.